Right. That to me was was very telling. Shaq, there have been other stories that have come out, like via The Athletic, where they said during the in-season tournament, Doc Rivers was actually brought in to be an advisor to Adrian Griffin. As you hear all this news, how do you process it? You know, we've, we've all, <clears throat> excuse me, we've all been around the business of basketball a long time. Something else is going on. Last time something like this happened, David Blatt, 30 and 11, Tyler took over and won the championship. Chris used the, the, the term, save the season. And when you say save the season, I would think there would be 11 and 37. Third best record in the league, second best record in the East. New players, new coaching staff. Mm. You know, I've, <clears throat> I've always been a firm believer that coach, okay, we as players got to do it. You know, we talk about defense and numbers. You have to want to play defense. And that's why I always talked about timely stops. I'm not, I'm not a defense. I'm not want to play defense because I'm big. I'll get in yeah. foul trouble. But two minutes left. We got to get timely stops. And, you know, th these guys are, are young and working together. But I think something else is going on. I don't want to speculate. I don't know what's going on. But, you know, you talk about a guy like Doc Rivers. Yes, he's an experienced coach, but he only has one championship. Uh, you, you know, you talk about Jeff Van Gundy. He has a lot of experience. But again, when it comes to the players, I don't care what schemes you have, you have to want to play defense. And Dame is not known as a defensive player. But again, that's why I always try to stick up for these guys and say, hey, if you can have timely stops because they have enough talent to, you know, they got they got major firepower offensively. But, you know, in these close games, if the last two minutes, you, you have to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm shutting this guy down. And until the players take onus and say that, it doesn't matter who they're going to bring in. They're still going to have these up and down. But their ups and downs are really good ups and downs. Like, they're like second knees. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. But I think being around this business for a long time, something else is going on. So we'll just stay tuned and you know, see what's going on. And for Adrian Griffin, I think those of us that know him know he is a great guy. And he, he has now a career record of 30 and 13. So that will look good. I'm sure he'll get another chance. There was more news in the NBA today. A trade. The Miami Heat, when they make trades, you go, ooh, what is this for? They make the move to get Terry Rozier, trading Kyle Lowry and a draft pick. Terry Rozier this year is having a career year. Career high 23.2 points per game. Career high 6.6 .6 assists per game. His estimated plus minus is close to Desmond Bain, and he's shooting about 36% from three. Jamal, when you heard this move, did you think, oh, this is a move that can take the heat to a next level, or I don't get it? Which no, I like the move because Scary Terry brings a whole different swagger, a whole different confidence, and he can, he can, people don't know this about Jimmy Butler. Jimmy is okay being Robin on the court at times. He doesn't mind passing the ball saying you take over for stretches. Terry can do that. He can take over stretches. He can take over games. He's another big shot maker. He's going to work hard. He's going to live in the gym. We all know the heat culture. I think it's a perfect fit for them. Does he blend in the heat culture? I mean, I think he needs to understand the, the coach. I don't really know him personally, but it looks to me to be like a player that does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And I don't think he, heat culture allows that. They, they, they have a system. Uh, you, you know, they, they have hierarchy. So, you know, is, is he going to be willing to just be the point guard that they're looking for, like taking all those ill-advised shots? Uh, if they're not going in, is not going to be happy with that. He has had a very efficient season, so I do want to stand up for my guy. But um, I wish him well, but he, he needs to understand that the Heat culture is, is, is similar to Popovich culture. Mm -hmm. You do it their way or you're going to be traded again. Trust me, I know. And the, <laughs> the Kyle Lowry aspect, now he moves to Charlotte, but your, your final take on the trade here. You know, I think Terry's going to definitely help Miami. Um, you have Kyle Lowry on an expiring contract um, going to wherever. I think he ends up landing yes. in a contender. contender. Uh, but Terry Ogier, I'm with Jamal. I think he can take the pressure off. He's a great catch-and-shoot three-point mm -hmm. shooter. He's had to generate a lot of offense in Charlotte, so I think that aspect of his game will be on display with Miami. Mm. I think the biggest thing is, like, Charlotte doesn't play a lot of defense. No. So I think with the heat, right. you have to defend. Right. And, um, you know, it's going to be quick getting him acclimated to the defensive system. And I'll tell you what, if they have to play Boston in the playoffs, Terry Rozier is going to be real confident going up there and playing. We have You're a good. You're good. Hey, Shaq, give that BS monologue and you win a whole segment without touching. Shaq. Coming up next, we're Miami talking City. about New York and the Clippers. So Shaq can punch me in the back. Miami said, thanks for that chip. Huh? Shaq said, thanks for that chip. You got to go now. Oh, yeah. yeah.